All right, we're going to look at another example. Uh, this is actually called solving polynomial equations. It's a little bit different than find the zeros of a polynomial function, it, just based on how it appears. So we're going to use the same steps, uh, but you can see it is written as an equation as opposed to a polynomial this time. So we're going to find the possible rational zeros, and we're going to do that by the factors of our constant. Oh, there are a bunch of them. Plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 12, and plus or minus 24 over the factors of our leading coefficient. So I'm not going to rewrite those, but it's going to be, uh, you're going to take this and divide it into each one of these. So when you do that, you'll basically get all of these numbers right here. And uh, as you can see, we're still going to get integer answers, so that's going to help us out tremendously. We are going to find four zeros in this one, so that should uh, help a little bit. So I've typed in our function, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at our graph. So here's our graph. Now, we've got a little bit of an issue. Uh, here's the thing that's going to be a little bit of an issue. As you can see, on the graph, what it looks like is it touches the x-axis. So what that would make me think is that that zero has a chance for having have, actually having a multiplicity of two. So uh, we can look at our table and just make sure that we know where that's going to be located. So you can see right here, it's going to be at uh, 2 comma 0. So what we're thinking is we have an x value of 2. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to use that 2 and do a little uh, synthetic division. So we'll write down the coefficients. Make sure you hold place value. That's one of the reasons that we brought this up earlier. So negative 6, negative 8, and then a positive 24. So let's see if we can't play the game. Bring that below the line. 2, 2, 4, negative 2, negative 4, negative 12, negative 24. So as you can see, that is a factor of the polynomial because we did get a 0 uh, for our remainder. What we're going to do now is uh, we actually think it has a multiplicity of 2. So it's going to be crazy, but we're going to synthetically divide again. So bring that down. 1, multiply, 2, 4, 8, 6, multiply, 12, 0. So as you can see, uh, that 2 was a multiplicity of 2 because we could divide evenly twice and get no remainder. Now, if you notice, we actually started with a polynomial that had a degree of 4. So we divide it by one zero and then another 0. So dividing it by the first 0 would make it cubic. And then dividing it by the next zero is going to make it quadratic. So again, that's what we're looking for to get to a quadratic equation. Because with quadratic equations, we can find our solution um, by using multiple methods. And again, uh, we know it's not factorable because it doesn't cross the x-axis. So what we would look into is we would actually see, you know, hey, can we find our solutions in another way? And the two that are going to work uh, all the time are going to be the quadratic formula and completing the square. Again, I think this is a layup with completing the square, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't do that. So I'll go ahead and take half of b, square it, multiply it by the leading coefficient, 1 times 4 is 4, so I'll come over here and add 4. So that'll give me negative 2. At this point, I've finished completing the square, so we'll find our solution now by factoring, I mean by uh, solving for x. And as you can see, we did get imaginary solution, and that should make sense if you go back and you look at your problem, because if uh, one of the solutions is imaginary, then it's not going to cross the x-axis. So it's good for us. So in terms of our solutions, that will give us two solutions. Two is another one, and then another two, so this solution actually has a multiplicity of two. So one thing you do need to remember is that uh, irrational numbers and imaginary zeros, just like we found right here, they will actually come in pairs. So remember, you can't have an odd number of imaginary zeros or irrational zeros. So we're going to look at one more, and then we'll uh, let you try some on your own.